Welcome back. Um, let's talk about the games that are coming up and already Everton away, Arsenal away. We're saying, well, what's the point of going? As a fan, what's the point of going? Oh, come on. So what is the point of going? <laughs> okay. Ask me that. Right. Objectively, I would still say there is very much a point in going because there is the reason... So at QPR will get one point between now and the end of the season. What? what <laughs> away from home. <laughs> yes, they will. Yes, we but will. You know why you go as a fan? And this is now speaking as a fan, not a journalist. You go in hope because if you get something from that Everton or Arsenal game... It makes it a great day. You, c- you can say, I was there. And I don't often talk about the fan side of me on this show, but I went, as a very similar scenario to this, newly promoted club, not quite getting the results away from home, Norwich away at Spurs, April 2012. We weren't given a hope in hell. Tottenham were meant to be going to the top four. Harry was meant to be getting the England job. And then they just started to slump. They just lost at the weekend. And we beat them 2-1. And we deserved it. We were brilliant. I went with my brother and it got him into football single-handedly that day because Norwich was so brilliant. And he still talks about it two and a half years on. And that was the, the game that started Tottenham's slump and then they failed and then Harry you know, lost the England job and all that. You go because of that hope. And if you don't have that hope anymore as a football fan, then you might as well stop supporting your team. James? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think every season needs a, needs a turning point, doesn't it? You know? and, um, and we're all hoping that turning point comes. If we, get, if we do get the point or the three points away, and hopefully that will bolster the rest of the season and you know we'll stop it. But it's like a roller coaster ride supporting QPR, isn't it? One week, oh, we beat Leicester, we're staying up. Then we it's lose like, to Swansea and like we're going down. Channel, it's, isn't it? yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> knowing us, we're going to go to Everton and win 2-0. That's, it's just, that would be typical QPR. Is he going to change the style, though? At some point, he's got to say to himself, look, I've tried this, it didn't work. I've tried this and it didn't work. I've got to try a different way. And it, even if it's an attacking way and, and whatever it might be, can we do that or do you have to wait your January for the new signing to be able no, to do that no you can change no I think he's he did something that I never thought he would do he spent the whole pre-season two months working on a specific formation and two games in this season realised oh, this isn't actually working and I was so surprised even then he changed the, the system because that was pre-season all the prep out the window and now we were we were with 4 2 so he's, he's done it once I don't think it's the formation I think if you're going to play Leroy for you want him in that hole between midfield and strike because he's, he's the closest thing we've got to a delta wrapped. He's, he's got f- quick feet. He's, he's got everything. What's happened to a delta wrapped, by the way? I think he's in a kebab shop. <laughs> 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 no, I, tell you, I love Adele. I love Adele. Uh, well, I love Adele as well. It's like, oh, he's, the last time I heard from Harry is that Ad- Ad- Adele's been training really hard. He's been, uh, you know, he's really putting it in for the week. I haven't seen him since. No, yep. Adele. I don't, I don't understand what the issue there is, but I mean, Adel Tarat's the sort of player that can come into this team now and allow, like you say, other players to play in positions where they should be playing rather than playing players that play well in certain positions out of position mm. all the time. And I think that's what we're lacking. I think we've got, we've got decent players, but we're playing them out of position because we haven't got anyone else to, yeah. to fill those I holes. I wish I could understand the centre mid thing. If I haven't been at, on reporting at a QPR game since the Liverpool one, but the next time I do, if he's still doing that, I will, I will ask him in the presser. Because I don't get it. Uh, well, I think Harry Resnick might give you a short, sharp shrift. Well, yeah, he gets a lot of journalists <laughs> short, sharp shrift. Yeah, I've seen it um, first hand. So, Everton and Arsenal away then. Yeah. Are we going to get. Let me put it this way six points up for grabs on the away games. How many are we going to get? <laughs> One point out of those. One. It could, <laughs> it could be six. It could be six. It could be six. You get good odds on that. It yeah. could be six. I mean, yeah. I think. Uh, before we look at the head to the burning game, I want to look back at the Leicester game and, and, and say, obviously, with the 51 chances that were there, is it fair to say, Keyshan, it could have gone either way? Absolutely. 51 chances in the game. I don't think that's happened for a long, long time. I mean, when I heard this stat after the game, I thought, really? Because you, you were so engrossed in the game that everything seemed to fly by really quickly. Having because I got home, I watched it back, and I thought, dearie me, as a if you if you like attacking football, that was that was the game to watch. However, if you're some sort of defensive coach, that's the game of nightmares. That was <laughs> the awful. ball kept going over the uh, long ball over to Varney, kept getting yep. cleared, didn't they? At one one, they could have easily gone two one up. Yep. There were spills when Leicester were really on top, spills where QPR was on top. Yeah, and it's one of those games that. You know, I'm always a great believer throughout the season things will balance itself out. So we lost to Liverpool and we beat Leicester. So to me, that sort of balances yeah. it out. I don't know what you think about no, that. No, absolutely. I think uh, you've got to be in it to win it. Although we were, we conceded two poor goals from, you know, as I saw it. But then the goals we scored, Leicester will probably say, yep, there were poor goals to concede. But Charlie Austin, again, just a striker's instinct. He knows where to be in the box. Uh, he just seems to have it down, you know, on point now. And uh, Vargas, I mean, you look at the first goal 
and it was an own goal, but that was genius play. Well, I, mean, I don't know what Stephen Corker was doing on the left wing anyway, but a great ball in, yeah. and if Morgan doesn't take a touch, Vargas is there to tap it in. That was brilliant play. It would have been a goal anyway, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it you know, if, if Morgan misses it, 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 it's a goal anyway. It would have been nice if Vargas had had, you know... But it does make you question, how eh? Corker wouldn't not get that far up the field in the away game, would he? No, no chance. God, no. <laughs> in terms of the game itself, I mean, it, was it a six-pointer? And going forward, is that a, a game now whereby it mean, It obviously means nothing if we lose to Burnley? Yeah. I mean, we talk about Crystal Palace, they beat Liverpool, they lose to Aston Villa, so it's all on to the next game. But, you know, beating Leicester, was that expected? Did you expect to, to win that game? Yeah, yeah, I did actually. I thought, um, I thought, I thought we started showing signs of, of, uh, of playing more fluid football, more attacking football. I think Vargas um, playing out on the right was brilliant as well. You know, I think, I think having that bit of extra pace on the wing is what we needed. I think we've been playing too many sort of defensively minded players out on the wing, really. And um, you know we miss we miss those kind of pacey uh, wingers that we you know the Lee Cooks and the Wayne Routledges you know that yeah. uh, uh, I think even Hoylet Hoylet should have a shout at uh, you know starting a few more games as well really like yeah. I think we need more pace out on the wing and I think that that allows our centre of midfield to work more and create more you know it's from, options from a QPR Leicester perspective and a, as a neutral was do you think that indicates to you that QPR will finish above Leicester or bears no significance? <laughs> Uh, I don't think it bears too much significance across a 38-game season as one game. You won't look back and then go, oh, we... we, we but I think in terms of the signs <laughs> of QPR's ability to play offensive attacking football and it working, this was a real positive. Um, what they've got to do is now see if they can take some of that on the road. Um, I think if they play a similar way against Burnley this Saturday, I think they'll have too much. If they... If they they play the pacey players on the wings, they play yeah. players in the right position and they go for it and they go at Burnley, they'll have too much for them. If they sit back and they let Burnley um, play their way into the game, they've, they've actually gone four unbeaten now and you're probably playing them at a bad time, you'll give them the opportunity to, to grow into the event. I think they should just go out and play like that at home all the time. And the atmosphere yeah. of these home games is absolutely terrific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I it's mean, it's, it, it, it's rocking, which, which is what they need. Yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. I think uh, what we do need to do is, uh, is to have a real fast start. I mean, if I was the manager, that midfield... Not a fast start by the opposing team scoring the first few minutes then. <laughs> <laughs> it probably, probably did us a favour, actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. I think we needed that. Um, no, I mean, I've said what my back four would be, and I still stick with that. In the midfield, I'd have... Um, oh, this is really difficult, because I like Leroy Fur. But so what you wouldn't I, have Vargas, Hen uh, uh, Henry, Barton, Fur. Yeah. But I, w I might be tempted. I don't have any issue with Fur. Uh, just sometimes I feel he loses the ball too, too much. Um, but it's Junior Hoylet definitely deserves a shout here. He'd play on the left uh, for me, Vargas on the right. You've got absolute pace and direct play there. Both yeah, can cut inside. Two real solid midfielders. I know, I, have that. I know he's out to the new year, but I think mm. Sandro is a big miss for us as well. Like, yeah. I, think, I think he's coming and done a good job, and he, he brings a bit of stability to the uh, to the Premier League. He's come back experience. as well now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, and he, and he defends well, and he gets forward well as well. And he, he's not he's not a risk taker. He's a you know he's a workhorse really. Yeah. And I think we I think we're missing him big time to be honest. 